All right, welcome back for our week eight NFL locks. I'm Animal over here with my terrible record, and this is Mr. Tony No Dimes with his pretty good record. Uh, actually, three and zero last week on your bets, and uh, I think you hit one of your prize pick squares. I did. David and Joku, Hayden Hurst, they came through. Also, who came through? The Chiefs against my 49ers. They covered a one point spread. That was easy. Hit the over of the Bengals, Falcons, and the Raiders, Texans game. So it was all good for my side. A lot of cash coming in over here. I can't say the same. I had an Ezekiel Elliott issue uh, with my prize picks entries. Uh, not just the one I gave out on the show, but uh, the ones I had in my actual, like all the ones I had. You, I showed you earlier. Yeah, you quite literally threw that Ezekiel over line on every single bet you made this weekend, yeah, this past weekend. If, if And they all lost by the Zeke, and uh, it was probably like $1,800 I would have won. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. Like in prize pick uh, lines, you probably went like 14 for 15, but none of it mattered because you had Zeke as yeah, a repeat and I, and offender. I, and I, the only one that I did win was because I had a flex play. So one and two on my bets, not great, but we're going to, we're going to fix that this week. So I'm not worried. Uh, let's just go ahead and get right into our prize picks entries. Uh, would you like to start? Cause you're hot. I will start it off. The first prize pick entry that I really like, I got a two square for you here. A couple of receivers. First guy up, Jalen Waddle, over 65 and a half receiving yards. Look, anytime Tua is playing, Jalen Waddle goes off. He has crushed this line in the past. Only time he hasn't is when he's paired up with either Bridgewater or Skylar Thompson. They're up against the Lions. They can't stop anything through the air. And one thing I found interesting was Price Picks has Tyreek Hill's line at 85 and a half. It doesn't make sense to me to have Jalen Waddle 20 yards lower than Tyreek Hill. When you have Tua playing and both these guys are like in the top six or seven receivers in term in terms of total yardage. So 65 and a half seems way too low for Jalen Waddle. Expect him to have a big game. Expect the Dolphins to blow up the Lions, but we'll get into that in a little bit. The other receiver that I like is Chris Olave to have more than 62 and a half receiving yards against the Las Vegas Raiders. Chris Olave is averaging 90 receiving yards in his last five games, going over this number four out of his last five games. And the only time he hasn't hit this line was when he left early against the Seahawks with a little bit of a cocky. And Jarvis Landry's already ruled out. And Michael Thomas is ruled out. Raiders defense is not that good. They're letting up the seventh most passing yards uh, gonna, per game. I'm going to take that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them? Olave and Waddle? No, I'm going to put Mostert, but that's the door. Sorry. No, all good. I want you to tell me. I want on Sundays to be invested into the same thing so we can root it together. But yeah, that's my first entry. Jalen Waddle and Chris Olave, more of their receiving yards. You bet on studs. These guys are young. They're studly. They're necessities of their offense. So go ahead and take take the more. I like it. I like it. I, mean, I liked at least half of it, so I took half of it. All right. Fair enough. No disrespect. All taken. All right, I have a two square. I think two squares are probably the safest uh, safest way to go. That's why I'm sticking to two squares. Two square, I got Zach Ertz, more than 44 and a half receiving yards. They're playing the Vikings. Vikings coming off the bye have not been uh, great throughout history. I believe they're two and nine against the spread. So they're just not a good team necessarily coming off the bye. Uh, obviously, that was a different coach with Mike Zimmer. But tight ends against the Vikings the past uh, three weeks. We got Mike Kosicki, six for 69. Cole Komet. Four for 45. Damn. Cole Komet. He, Cole Komet Cole Komet. This shit? Four for 45 hit this shit. Adam Troutman went three for 37, and Juwan Johnson went three for 33. That's, so that's like 70 yards combined. Exactly. From a tight so end. it's the same same team. Exactly. So uh, Zach Ertz is a good tight end. Hollywood Brown uh, out. Robbie Anderson not really getting involved. It's really just, you know, kind of D hop. D hop and Zach Ertz. So I'm expecting Zach Ertz to uh, crush this line, actually. Plus, the Cardinals actually just, they're a better uh, team on, on the road. So they play better on the road. Kyler plays better on the road. So I'm he's away hammering. from his Xbox. He's away from his Xbox. Exactly. I'm hammering this. Um, and then I'm going to pair this with my second square is Deontay Johnson, more than 49 and a half receiving yards. So I'm going to give you the yardage and I'm going to tell you why I like it because he's getting five catches a game the last three games. He had 10 targets the last game, seven targets the game before that, 13 targets the game before that. Hasn't always translated into the yards, but. It's going to. It has to eventually. When you're getting that many targets, I believe he's averaging like nine targets a game, you're going to turn into yards, and especially when you're a talented wide receiver like Deontay Johnson. It's just There's been some weird stuff going on with quarterbacks there. Kenny Pickett's finally getting settled in now, I think, and uh, Deontay is probably the uh, best guy there outside of, you know, George Pickens is emerging. But, yeah, I like it. And against Philly, like Philly should be able to get a lead early, be up often. So 
They're going to be in a position to throw the ball a lot that game. It's a good one. All right. I got another two square for you here. A couple of quarterbacks. First guy up. Daniel Jones to go over 15 fantasy points. Daniel Jones is quietly having a pretty good year. You know, it doesn't always relate to fantasy points because he's more of a game manager, right? He's like, he's kind of just keeping the ball safe, way safer than he has in the past. And look, the Seahawks are letting up 19 points per game against opposing quarterbacks, 23rd in the NFL. And it's not like they've had a gauntlet of quarterbacks either. They've played Andy Dalton, Jared Goff, half a Trey Lance, terrible Russell Wilson, Marcus Mariota. So... Their defense Terrible is Russell. nothing good, all right? So Daniel Jones, I think he'll have a pretty good game. And also, like, Seahawks' offense is good enough to keep the Giants in a position where they need to score. I don't think they're going to be in many situations where they're going to be able to control the clock and, you know, bleed it out. They're going to have to keep tempo with the Seahawks' offense. So that's the first guy I like, Daniel Jones, over 15 fancy points. And then another one might be gross, but also could be sneaky. P.J. Walker. More! Then 10 and a half fantasy points. 10 and a half fantasy points from a quarterback? There are a lot of running backs and wide receivers on price picks that have higher lines than this. And look, I understand PJ Walker. He came from the XFL. Does he even really deserve to be in the NFL? You know, he basically got here by Matt Rule, and where is he? He's in the garbage can. But that does not mean that PJ Walker should be there, all right? Last week against the Buccaneers, he had. 15 fantasy points. And guess how many rushing attempts he had against the Bucs, if you don't already know. Um, I don't. I'll guess uh, seven. Zero. Oh. <laughs> Zero. He lit up the Bucks without using his legs. He was a pocket passer. Eh, he, you know, he scrambles around. But it, he beat the Bucks with his arm. 15 fantasy points. This game against the Atlanta Falcons should be competitive. I mean, it's a massive step back in terms of uh, a defensive opponent, right? Atlanta, they got all types of injuries in the secondary. They're 32nd in pressure rate. Uh, They let up the most completion percentages, and they're they're down so many DBs. Like, Atlanta is in no position to stop any fucking quarterback. P.J. Walker, according to PFF, posted weak high marks in you know, his PFF grade and big time throws, which he had six of. Dude, he lit up the Bucks last week. He he had a good week, and I'm not saying that this is gonna he's gonna be just as good. He could be bad. My point is, is ten and a half is such a low total. Yeah, against a terrible defense, it is low. He's an NFL quarterback at this point. Whether we want to believe it or not, he is in the NFL playing. You got to be able to get 11. That's fair. That's a fair, that's a very fair, that's a very fair (laughs) statement. He is an NFL quarterback. All right. Well, I got an NFL quarterback for you. A real one? A real one. None none of that PJ Walker. He goes by the name of Mac Jones. Mm. And all of a sudden, people are acting like he's not an NFL quarterback when he is. Look, Mac Jones, last five games, 13 yards. Not good. Obviously, we know what happened. Bailey Zappi came in after only three drives. Before that, before he was injured, 321 yards, 252 yards, 213 yards, 232 yards. You see where I'm going here? They're all over 200 yards. This line, the line is Mac Jones more than 187 and a half passing yards. Dang. It's a very, that, that. It seems like they made that thinking like he's not going to play the whole game. And I don't think that's the case. I think he's going to play the whole game. I was going to say the same thing. It, it, it feels like price picks, their team's zappy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, also, last time Mac Jones played the Jets, he threw for 300 yards. So, Mac Jones is a good quarterback. I think he just came in, he a little rust, and then just, I don't know what happened there. But good might be a stretch, but he's not bad. He's going to be able to throw for 200 yards. Because here's what happened. Brett Rippon... 225 yards last week. Aaron Rodgers, 246 yards before that. This is against the Jets. Skylar Thompson, 166 yards. I don't even think he planned on playing, though, to a... No, I, I mean, he he. we want to talk about, like, not an NFL quarterback. Skylar Thompson might be in that category. Pickett and Trubisky combined, 204 yards. Joe Burrow, 275 yards. So Jets' defense is, it's, you know, it's supposed to be a good defense. They're not that great against the pass. So uh, a lot of yards... This is a very easy smash for me. Mac Jones, more than 187 and a half passing yards. I'm going to really pair, like that, that one. pair that with Mike Kosicki, more than 26 and a half receiving yards. Uh, he's coming off back-to-back seven target games. Uh, last three games for him, he went three for 27. So he, you know, bet just barely hits this here. Uh, six for 69 and then one for 30. So I'm just hoping that, you know, Tua, he's been targeting him. So if he just keeps that up. Tight ends versus the Lions have excelled. We got Dalton Schultz went five for 49 last week. Hunter Henry, four for 54. Will Disley, 
four for 39, and even Irv Smith goes two for 32. So all those guys go over this, and uh, Mike Kosicki, he's been getting involved. So I like it. I mean, li- playing against the Lions, it's a great time to bet you're more. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm going to pair that. Mike Kosicki, more than 26.5 with Mac Jones, more than 187.5 passing yards. That's all I have for, for my squares. That's all I got, too. Prize beautiful. picks, couple of winners. Beautiful, beautiful. If you want to uh, participate, you know, you download Prize Picks, you uh, promo code BDGE. Uh, I believe we still got a 100% deposit match Hell for yeah, first we do. time users. So uh, if it's your first time, make sure you deposit and get your deposit match. Game time. This is what I live for. This is what I. This is where I make my bread and butter. This is where you go three and zero, and then you continue on to go six and zero. I want to get my my first one out of the way because it's hit it. It's gross. Oh really? It's gross. We're gonna start off on that type of foot. Look, here's the deal. I don't normally do this, but this year it's just one of those things where I I feel like there is an actual betting. Uh, favorite advantage here with the way that they've been playing. Broncos plus two and a half. Look, they're they're going to London. Um, it's the morning game for us. We either get a win this week or we become the Lions. So, like, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to actually just win this game outright. Plus two and a half. You know, we, we're going to take that. But um, that's it. The, the line opened up at plus four and a half. 74% of the, the, the bets are on Jacksonville. I, I think that it opened up that way because there was a thought that Brett Ripon might yes. start. And then, obviously, Russell Wilson, is he better than Brett Ribbon at this point? Maybe. I think our but defense is just still too good, and we're going to be all over Trevor. He's going to throw. He's going to play play not so well, throw some picks maybe. We win, but it's gross, but we win. It's gross. The only thing I really like betting on Broncos game is just the, the under. Yeah, the game for sure. Total it's under. safe. Yeah, I mean, obviously, books are kind of catching up to that. I feel like they put their totals at, like, the mid-30s. Yeah, I'm, I'm just crazy. Broncos 2 and a half. Let's move on. All right. My first bet, the one I like the most of this week. Miami Dolphins, minus three and a half against the Detroit Lions. We saw the Cowboys as seven-point favorites. We saw the Vikings as six-point favorites against the Lions. A lot of similar teams built like Miami and in that same weight class as Miami have been laying close to, if not full touchdowns against the Lions. And now here we are with Dolphins only laying three and a half. As we've said before, Lions have a terrible defense. Miami, even with their mini quarterback carousel that's been going on, you know, the rotation of Bridgewater and Skylar Thompson, they still have a top five passing offense. And they've all, they've also had like a pretty tough schedule of opposing defenses against the pass. So I think Tua goes off. I think Waddle goes off. I think Hill goes off. Gusecki. I know Gasecki. I know the Lions offense is kind of cool. It's a little sexy. They're getting Swift back. Amon Ra is healthy. But like, I, I just think Miami ends up lapping the Lions. And look, I'm not going to back Jared Goff under pressure. Miami blitzes a ton. Jared Goff, we've seen him crumble under pressure. We saw him get super uncomfortable against the the Patriots and Bill Belichick when he was able to get pressure. Obviously, last week, Cowboys and their good pass rush were able to get to him. So I don't think the Lions stand a chance. I think people are still kind of riding a little bit of a high of hard knocks. Maybe not. Maybe we're far enough away from it. but we're, We're over that. We might be over it, but I, I, I think Lions are just one of those feel-good teams you want to back, and eventually, sooner rather than later, we're going to we're gonna clear that stigma off of them because they're just horrific. Dolphins minus three and a half. Lock it up. Best bet on the board. All right. I'm going to go for my second pick with the Cardinals plus three and a half. The line opened at five and a half. I mentioned earlier about uh, how the Cardinals play better, you know, just on the road as road dogs. Well, Cliff Kingsbury is 19-18-1 against the spread on the road in the regular season. And then he's also 15-4-1 against the spread as a road underdog. So I think they actually win this game outright. The new Call of Duty did come out. <laughs> it is something I am concerned of. I, I'm assuming that because this is an away game, he won't have his computer to be able to play unless he has a gaming laptop. I do not know if he does. I'm going to have to contact Jack Settleman. Maybe see what the deal is. He's, he knows a guy who knows a guy. So we'll see there. I'm assuming Murray does have one. He seems like a pretty rich dude who could afford it. That's what I, I would think too. But Kyler, 13-4-1 and one against the spread as a starter, as a road underdog. So maybe he takes these road games a little more seriously than the home games. I don't know. I also mentioned earlier the Vikings just don't play that great coming off a of bye historically. So Cardinals, I think, have a little bit of an advantage here. Uh, I just think plus three and a half. I think they're going to win this game. So this is probably a safe bet. And if they don't win it, they probably lose by a field goal. So we still cash. Cover. We still cash, baby. It'll be close. High scoring game. I like it. All right. For my next bet, one that I feel really good about. It is a little stinky, but it is the over of 41 points in the Falcons and Panthers game. 
You might be saying, Tony, no dimes. Why are you putting your dimes against two terrible offenses? Am I putting them with terrible offenses? Or am I putting them against terrible, horrific defenses? The Falcons are missing everybody in their secondary. They are absolutely decimated. A.J. Terrell, probably not going to play. Casey Hayward, probably not going to play. Panthers defense, we obviously know they stink. You look at these two teams and who they played last week, Falcons against Cincy. Cincy has a very good defense. They've grown into their own, so this is a big step back. It's also a huge step back for the Panthers in competition there. You know, they played the Bucs, uh, still able to get 21 on the board. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this earlier, but Falcons, they're dead last in, in pressure rate. They can't blitz. So I actually think P.J. Walker is going to have a nice game. And there's no team in the NFL that has been more money on overs than the Atlanta Falcons because their offense has been they can score they can score they're not bad they're respectable they do run at a high rate and you know that doesn't always tend to the game script that you want but because I think this is a divisional game it's going to be competitive a lot of back and forth both teams feel like they're punching in their weight class both teams feel like they can leave this week with a win so it's going to be close competitive and it is blowing by 41 that is just too low of a total even for these pretty bad offenses. I don't hate it. I just, you know, I'm, I'm just very, I don't like that game really. I actually like the Falcons. So, I mean, over, hopefully they just win by a lot maybe and they score. I also have Panthers money well, line. I, I kind of like it. I yikes. Mean, I think that's sneaky value. Yikesy, baby. All right, listen, my last pick. I'm going with the Commanders plus three. I'm hoping on the, inex- the inexperienced QB mistakes to come from this game with Sam Ellinger starting. And I'm hoping that the commanders can just exploit exploit that opportunity here. They're gonna obviously when you have a, a quarterback making his first start, there's always an opportunity for defenses to get after him early with blitzes and, and you know, pressure him. And uh, Ron Rivera is a veteran, veteran head coach. He knows what he's doing. I think. I think that the the commanders' defense is. I mean, they're pretty good. I mean, they they held Aaron Rodgers last week, right? They held off Aaron Rodgers. So I, I look. I don't know if they're really. Actually, I don't look. I'm trying to. <laughs> You're trying to convince yourself right now that yeah, they're I think, a pretty good defense. I think they actually win this game outright. I just think they're they're pretty good against the run. I don't know if that's true or not. But I think Jonathan Taylor just they're gonna know to, you know, we gotta stop Jonathan Taylor, make Sam Ellinger throw it, and I think they're gonna make him throw it, and he's not gonna be able to uh, get a win here. I, I have a bet in, in place. Colts minus I wanna say two and a half. I think I got it before I hit the three. But I as weird as it sounds, I think Elling Ellinger gotta be an upgrade over Matt Ryan. There are not a lot of quarterbacks in this league that have been worse than Matt Ryan. I mean, Matt Ryan made a career off being phenomenal under pressure, and I believe you made a video saying that Matty Ice has completely melted. Yeah. He sucks under pressure. He's not mobile anymore. He's been a total liability. So is Ellinger good? I don't know. But I think at this point, he has to be an upgrade. Similar to, you know, Brett Rippon and Russell Wilson. No comment. No comment. Too personal. My pick is, that's it. I've, I, I've said what I said. Your pick is your pick. I've said what What's I done said. Is done. I'm taking the Commanders plus three. I think they went out right. Sam Ellinger, they're going to make some mistakes. Commanders are going to exploit it. Take, take advantage of it. All right. I will not be riding with you, but I bet that you should be riding with me. Monday night, Cincinnati Bengals minus three in Cleveland against the Browns. Cincinnati is finally playing like that top tier team that we thought they could be, what they looked like last year. And really the changes come from Joe Burrow getting a little more healthy, Zach Taylor trusting Burrow to throw the ball at a high percentage. 90% of their offensive snaps are coming out of the shotgun and they have been really successful doing so. It's also helped with their run game. And look, the Browns are littered with injuries on their defense. Miles Garrett, questionable. Clowney's questionable. Denzel Ward doesn't look like he's going to play. Possibly JOK, the young, good middle linebacker. He might not be there. Yeah, however you say that name. And then on the flip side, Browns offense, Wyatt Teller, highly questionable. David Njoku, don't believe he's going to play. So... Browns just really aren't in a position to compete with Cincy, who's getting in their stride. Meanwhile, Browns are kind of breaking down. I know Jamar Chase won't be there. I think that is a huge hit, but I also think we saw it reflect a little bit in the line. Bengals were like three and a half, even four point favorites. Now they're down to a flat three. I still feel comfortable about it. It really comes down to just if if Zach Taylor still trusts his offense to throw at such a high rate, even with their number one wide receiver not being there. But it also brings me comfort back in the Bengals that, look, Jacoby Brissett just hasn't been that good the last two weeks against New England, against Baltimore. Uh, He's been having to put the team on his back, and he just doesn't look like that dude. Uh, 
you know. So I don't like him. No, I don't like him either. And I think he's going to be in a position to where he's going to have to throw the ball a lot, and that's just not a situation you want to be in. You don't want to be behind with Jacoby Brissett. So Monday night, Bengals minus three. Give me it. Bengals are a hungry team too. You I know, love the Bengals. One of my top five teams. Yeah, yeah they're they're I'm also all over them. They're four and three, so they got some catching up to do with the not, Ravens. Not worried about them, like the offense. Like yeah, Jamar Chase is obviously a great, you know, it's a big piece to be, be losing, but you still got T Higgins, Tyler Boyd's a baller, Hayden Hurst can, you know, ball. Joe Mixon is still gonna be running into his line, scoring, you know, so getting sixty yards a game somehow. Yeah. And then um Mike Thomas, he'll, he'll step up. Hopefully. He'll step up. You really can't replace a Jamar Chase. He'll but. step up. Square up. <laughs> yeah, square up. <laughs> um, all right. That's all we got for today. Like the like this shit. Subscribe. Share it with your friends. Share it with your mothers. Yeah, share it with your mothers. Uh, happy Halloween. Download prize picks. Promo code BDG. Have a good weekend. Get turned. Get this money with these picks. <laughs>